So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about shooting panoramas. All right, so first of all, let's look at some panoramas. So we're going to start off with a couple from around Fresno. And um, so panoramas are photos of a place when you don't have a wide enough view on your camera to capture everything that's going on. So instead you take multiple photos and stitch them all together. So this is one from downtown Fresno. And here's another one from um, kind of by the, I think it was the southwest area of Fresno where there's some train yards and such and there was a beautiful sunset. So I took advantage and took a big old uh, panorama. And now for this you can see I'm using the rule of thirds and the landscape isn't as important to me as the actual clouds and that's why there's so much more sky in the photo. Um, here's an, on top of the circular parking structure in downtown and again we have some fun elements down here but I'm really concentrating on the sky and so the sky is taking up most of the photo. All right. You might remember this photo from the last lecture. This is the wider shot where it was a couple of different photos to create this panorama. This was multiple shots as well. Now this is a panorama actually going from the top down. So when I looked over this bridge, I could really just see maybe this area just straight across, but I wanted to get the full look of looking from the top down to the bottom right down here. Um, this wall right here you can see on the edges was actually a straight wall where I was photographing, but how I made this and processed it, it ends up having this very circular wide uh, fish, was it, um, fisheye view look to it. Here's another panorama going across this lovely landscape and some mountain trails. This is actually um, a inside of a part of a volcano. Here's another example of a panorama going from top to bottom inside of a museum. And this is an example that we looked at at the last lecture and this was actually a panorama going um, from the side and it's uh, double stacked so I took nine shots going across here and then nine shots going across up here to stitch it all together. Now I could have tried to step back and get the full photo but the big issue was that it was lined with these trees and you can see they're lined all around the edges and so if I stepped back I didn't get this whole view up here we had a bunch of trees in the way instead. So I did this panorama and again this is another example of where this was actually in reality a straight line, but how it's stitched together, it gives it this look that it's um, turning or rounded. Uh, this is another double stacked panorama where I did a bunch of images at the top and then at the bottom and then stitched them all together. If you see these little red lines here, um, that's from someone had I think those uh, light up shoes. <laughs> and they rode across the floor there. And you can also see some like ghostly images of people. That's because they were standing there for part of the exposure and then they walked away. And this one was uh, one that I took where I could not use my tripod. So for a lot of landscape photography, most people say don't shoot in the middle of the day, but sometimes you have no choice to. We were on a boat going to the Statue of Liberty and it was they only operate during a certain part of the day so by trying to stay as still as I possibly could I was able to capture enough shots to create this panorama and this is one more um, I include this one because this is actually in uh, Uganda which is in Africa and I know a lot of people have a perception of Africa just being villages and such this is one of their cities called Kampala with I believe over four million people and you can see all of the different buildings and such that are built and at the time I visited they were also building a new Hilton. Okay so we know what panoramas look like now we know how to shoot a panorama. 
Now pay attention because you're going to be doing this for your next assignment. Ideally, you'd be able to use a camera with manual controls, such as a DSLR or mirrorless camera. You would also use a tripod and hopefully a cable release. And a cable release is something that you plug into your camera so that you can um, take the photo without actually touching the camera. Because if you're doing a long shutter speed when you touch the camera, sometimes it will shake a little bit and you don't want to get that movement in your photo. Now if you don't have a cable release, you can also use the timer function. So most cameras have a function where you can click the shutter and the photo will be taken like 10 seconds later. This works out really nicely because you can click, the, click on the shutter button and then after 10 seconds have gone by, the camera has stopped moving and it takes a sharp photo. So one thing that's really important is to set up your camera to take vertical shots. Now I know that panoramas are these long horizontals, but and when we get into Photoshop to put them all together, using vertical shots actually works better. Uh, if you remember from our practice, uh, practice run when we put a panorama together in Photoshop, there was those edges, the corners, that we ended up cropping out. So that's just what's going to happen. Those corners are going to have no information. The stuff that's closest to you, the middle photo, is going to take up the most from the top to bottom. So usually you want to switch to a manual mode and use a small aperture so you have a deep depth of field. We've talked about this in the landscape photography section already. And you want to um, set your aperture and your ISO. And usually I keep my ISO between 100 and 400. Then I adjust my shutter speed for a good exposure. So ISO first set between 100 and 400. I set my aperture. Usually, you know, if it's landscape or cityscapes, I try to use a smaller aperture, such as f11, f16, f22. And then I use my shutter speed to add in as much light as possible for good exposure. Next, I switch to manual focus. And that's because if you're shooting with autofocus, um, <clears throat> each time you shoot your photo, the next photo, the autofocus might try to refocus on something else. So I find the closest thing that's in my image that I want to be in focus, I focus my camera on that, and then I leave the focus alone and don't change the focus. Next, I'm gonna swivel my camera to the edge of where you want your panorama to start. A very important thing to do is to overlap your shots by one third. So you're going to take the first photo, swivel your camera, so you have a third of the photo in the second shot, and repeat until you reach the end of the view you are shooting. And for your assignment, you do need to have at least five photos for your panorama. So let's take a step back, and I am going to show you exactly what I mean um, what, by swiveling your camera and such. So here I have my camera. Here I have my tripod. Um, there's different types of tripods that work different ways. This specific, specific tripod has flip locks. So and when you flip it, you can move the legs up and down. Some of them are twist locks where you actually twist the legs around to unlock them and then retwist them to lock them up again. So this one is flip. And tripods, uh, some of them have these plates that come off. They're called quick release plates. Some of them, you just attach it straight up to the top. So with a quick release plate, you can see there's like a little screw in here. And at the bottom of cameras, there's a little screw hole right there. So I'm going to take my quick release plate and screw it in here. And usually I try to get it pretty tight. And then I move it so it's nice and straight. And then go ahead and tighten it. Now, if you have a hard time tightening these things, sometimes I do, sometimes my hands are kind of funky. Um, there's usually like this little area right down here where you can slip a quarter in and give it a nice quick uh, tightening. So after that, I'm gonna place it on my tripod. Let's move it over. And let me screw, move this over. There's a place to tighten the quick plate down right here. And just a quick tip, usually when I'm out in the wild photographing, 
I keep this around while I'm doing all this, just in case something slips so that my camera doesn't fall to the floor and I break something. All right, so now that we have that done, I am going to switch to a vertical position. Right now my camera is a horizontal position and I want to switch to vertical for my panorama. All right, so now that I'm at a vertical position, this is where I would actually go ahead and decide, and I, I didn't tighten down this other area that keeps it easy to move it back and forth. So at this point, this is where you decide where you're gonna start your panorama. You look through, you take your photo, and then you swivel a little bit, overlapping by a third each time. I'm gonna show you on screen what I mean. And then you take another photo, swivel again, take another photo, swivel again, take another photo. You are not moving your tripod, you are just moving your camera. That's really important. So, if you don't have all this, um, or if you're not shooting with a tripod, well, let's just go with not shooting with a tripod first. So, if you remember from the landscape lecture and the cityscape at night lecture, sometimes we can't use a tripod or we don't have a tripod. So what you can do to add some stability is to make sure that you're um, standing nice and stable and you can get your camera and you hold your lens with your left hand, you hold your camera with your right hand so you can hit your shutter speed and you keep your arm down nice and stable next to your body as much as possible. And then you're able to keep yourself planted Click, take your photo, move, 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 click, take your photo. So you are acting like the tripod um, and you are just moving your top part of your body while keeping your feet completely planted on the floor. That's really important. Uh, let's see. Now, if you were, let's just say you were shooting in dark and you weren't shooting vertical, uh, same thing. Keep your hand here on the lens, hand here on the right, with your right hand on here, and keep your arms close to your body and stiff so that you're not hopefully moving as much. That gives you a lot more stability. Another tip, and this is something that people who shoot guns probably know about, is that your body is the most stable and at rest when you let a breath out. So. If it's dark, you're using a slow shutter speed, and you're trying to get a nice clear photo, take in a breath, let it out, take the photo. So here I am, taking a breath, let it out, click. That's when your body's gonna be the most stable. Now, um, if you're using your phone for this, basically you're gonna do the exact same thing as what I just did this. You're gonna have your phone vertically, and you're going to um, keep your two feet planted and you're just going to try to keep where your phone is is in the same place as possible and you're going to click turn click turn click turn click turn click turn click and like I said one of the really important things about shooting for a panorama is overlapping those shots by a third so let's go back to the screen I'll show you what I mean overlapping by a third. Here is uh, some photos I shot and you can really see this. Okay, so here is this building here. So here's the photo. Here's my building. And by the way, this little thing way back here, that's the Statue of Liberty. But um, so on this next shot, you're going to see this building is still in the shot. And so I'm overlapping by that third. What was over here about a third in I'm going to keep and it's going to be on the side of my next photo and there it is. It's actually probably overlapping by 40%. Overlapping by more is safer than overlapping by less. So same thing here we have let's look at this building here and in the next photo and there it is right there. Okay here's another building that's the one tower and there it is there. That's what I mean by overlapping by a third. Whatever was in your photo, um, on let's say if you're going from left to right, whatever's on your photo on the right hand side should be part of the left side of the next photo. And so there's this constant overlapping happening. So when you get it into Photoshop, Photoshop can see exactly where the overlap is happening and it makes it a lot easier to bring it all together. 
So uh, that's it on shooting the panorama. That's your one of your assignments this week. So I know that you know this isn't the best time to be going out and traveling and everything, but you know maybe your neighborhood is there a park by your house? Um, I don't know. Look for somewhere somewhat interesting, hopefully, to photograph your panorama in because next week you will be we will be talking about how to edit that panorama. And it's going to be a little bit more in-depth than the first exercise we did. We're actually going to start off in Lightroom. So get out there, take some photos, and have some fun.